Well, now I'm going to do a slideshow presentation, albeit it will be on just the preview pane because I haven't figured out uh, exactly how to have the PowerPoint just yet, but there's some technical difficulties. I went to the Kimball Art Museum today and I'd like to talk about various pieces of art that I went to go see. And it's going to be in chronological order, and you can make pieces of art. Of course, I'm citing the Kimball Art Museum in Fort Worth. You should absolutely go visit it. It's a great visit. And go see these pieces of art for yourself. So, starting off, this is a piece by Cezanne. It's one of my favorite, actually, in the exhibit. I really enjoyed it, and I think it's interesting to look at it from three different angles because it kind of looks like you're going in different directions when you're on these uh, paintings and it just it, it seems to evoke kind of a pastoral scene and uh, you don't know if that's a path or maybe it's kind of a part of an agricultural setup but it does seem kind of serene and beautiful and it's really a great place to start off because I often go to this part of the exhibit and see this painting there it's part of the permanent collection as far as I know, and it's it's just really beautiful. It has a nice array of cutlers. It evokes something nice, peaceful, serenity. This is what you would expect from a rural scene, usually, and I really enjoy that, and I enjoy the perspective of how the road seems different each way you look at it. It might sound obvious, but it's kind of nice, and of course the granite behind of the Kimball is beautiful. You can see it in these various pictures, and even the frame for this painting is actually very nice as well. You know, sort of ornate, and I think it blends in with uh, the color scheme, the tan and red and brown and yellow and all that. That's uh, that blends in with the green and blue and white and and black and um, the it, it, turquoise. I mean, you can almost say. I mean, you see all these different colors. Is well, amazing thing is, it's just not. It's not just one color. It's it's many colors. So I think that's absolutely beautiful. Another one of my favorites is this uh, deer uh, painting. It's on the permanent collection. You know, it's coming downstream. It's nature is part of life, and th there's something beautiful going on over here. You know, it's just we're in our natural state, the brook. Uh, but you can see there's kind of bricks, and like the. It, it, it almost looks as if well, industrialism is about to or the, you know, civilization in some sense is about to come down on the brook. Even that uh, deer in the middle over here kind of looks worried, but that tree is holding it back. And uh, I don't know, maybe a bridge will be built. Uh, of course, every city in the world was once natural. I mean, these are just my thoughts. Um, and it's all up for grabs, of course. Here's a painting, 1865, I believe. It just makes you wonder, you know, you think about 1865, the Civil War under the United States, but this is France. So, you know, there's there's all these things. The world is, is not, uh, not every scene looks the same. Uh, you know, if you see all this, maybe you think it was Ireland, and uh, maybe you think it was the coast of England. I mean, or perhaps this is a unique geographic location, but if you're not familiar with it, it just makes you wonder, and what's that thing out in the distance? Is it kind of a skiff? Is it a little boat? What's the, the wagon doing in the water? Is it lost, or is it trying to get out? Was there a shipwreck? Or is that something ominous in the distance? It's, it may be a building or a rock jutting out, because it's kind of in the darker portion, but there seems to be light shown on the land, so you kind of come after there after you're fishing. Something to think about. Clemenceau, uh, president of France, or prime minister of France during World War I, uh, when I remember when I first saw this, uh, I'd recently saw Dr. Strangelove, Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove, and uh, General Ripper indicates that uh, a quote by Clemence Clemenceau, and <coughs> excuse me, and I think that's just, that's really interesting. Um, of course, this was before World War I. George Clemenceau. And then here's actually a painting that I hadn't seen before. Kind of a nice, uh, you have these triangles, they're fishing nets, right? But they kind of contrast to that other triangle. You could arguably say this is a little triangle, what you see in the river. Maybe a trapezoid of some sort. I just I like how that, that contrasts, drying the nets. And then you have this kitchen garden. What's going on here? You have some shadows. 
there's light on the garden and that's where all the colors and things happen and the road to get on the garden may not always be nice but once you're there food and nice things happen but you can see there's something a little going on maybe some animals playing maybe a rock so is there a rock in the road as you go to the garden we what about beyond the garden there's some studico houses and uh red roof tan roof it's interesting it's a new acquisition it was actually my first time seeing it Hadn't been there in several months. Uh, Venice, Venezia. What better paintings? I love paintings of Venice. I just think it's interesting. You have this stark contrast. You know, water is water. It's eminent. It's dominant. And then you have civilization springing up from the water. Of course, it's these few hundred islands. You know, what was it like 4,000 years ago? It was just a few hundred islands, right? But then things built up and people built unities and it was a difficult location. And I think it's... Uh, it's interesting, of course, lots of Shakespeare plays revolve around there, lots of history, Lord Byron, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's, it's, uh, I love that tower in the background. It's very interesting. The Grand Canal looking toward the Rialto. Um, here's a portrait of uh, one of my favorites, actually, uh, that's in the Kimball Museum. It evokes this beautiful scene uh, from Euripides' play, Iphigenia. And basically, we have, uh, and it's based off the uh, Iliad, first scenes of the, I well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's some degree. But uh, there's, there's Achilles, and he's angry at Agamemnon. You can see it in his eyes. I mean, I, you, you wish you could zoom in there. Sorry, I was, uh, thought I might have another picture. Uh, you zoom in there, his eyes, they're kind of just, they, they're filled with the, uh, you know, the, the, the wrath. That's not good, it's pixelated. But um, I was working with an iPhone, uh, forgive me, I mean, it's, uh, they're good pictures, and they get the job done, and then, but you have Agamemnon over here, he just, he doesn't care, you know, he's just, it's disregard, and there's Clytemnestra, she's crying for her daughter, and, you know, Achilles is about to draw his sword, and, uh, she looks like a Renaissance angel, Iphigenia, in the middle. And I like how she's in the middle. She's between all these emotions. Behind her is sadness. But what's that going to do? She's kind of leaning towards Agamemnon because, you know, you, 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 you just, you shouldn't uh, care. Uh, you, know, you know, and you have Achilles. He's about to draw his sword. He's filled with anger. This is just a really great painting. One of the, one of the very popular. I remember seeing books with this on the cover. Not the best quality picture right here, but you see the torment of St. Anthony. And what's interesting about this, and what many say is one of the best uh, pieces of the collection at the Kimball, is that this is the first painting by Michelangelo. He was a teenager. He was like 15 years old. You see him here. He's drawing the torment of St. Anthony. Of course, Michelangelo is known for his uh, creation of uh, the Statue of David. So perhaps, he, he, you know, we, we don't always think of him as a painter, more of a sculptor. Um, one of my favorite stories of uh, Michelangelo is that his father used to beat him while he was growing up. And he, because, the, you know, they were a rich family, and his father said, I couldn't have my son working uh, with his hands, and so Michelangelo learned how to work with his mind, and uh, one time when the a prince um, commissioned a statue, and the prince had heard for three months Michelangelo was just staring at the statue, and he, he didn't think, he didn't know if it w was true or not, he, uh, so he went to go see for himself, the prince that is, and he sees Michelangelo, and he figured out all the rumors were true. He had just been staring at this block of marble for months, three months. And once uh, he, whis he asked Michelangelo, uh, what's going on? And Michelangelo whispers to him, uh, Sto laborando, which means I'm working. Sto laborando. And it's... Three, uh, about three months later, that block of marble became the statue of David. So I think it's interesting to think about that little paradigm uh, that one might have acquired from the season of Lost um, TV show. But you have the torment of Miss Anthony, and there's this, you know, almost grotesque looking creatures, and they're tormenting him, but he's staying in there, and the light behind him 
he's he's holding in there. You know, he's he's not going to go down on those hard cliffs, but beyond there, there seems to be better things and in the sky and things of that nature. But continuing on, Abraham leading Isaac to the sacrifice. What I think about this is when I see this painting, I think about Kierkegaard writing about the logical incons uh, just dilemma that had occurred uh, between the Abraham following the command of God and, uh, or, uh, you know, not supposed to kill anybody. So it's interesting. Uh, Abraham leading Isaac to the sacrifice. New acquisition, kind of nice. Uh, Christ giving the keys to St. Peter. Great. I thought this was nice. And the key is unlike anything else in the painting. Had to get a close-up of that. That is very interesting. You know, you hear about it being mentioned at the, the trial of St. Thomas More that uh, about the keys being given and you know what's this guy doing over here uh, and these are the disciples one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven I guess the twelfth one is back there um, anyway very interesting very interesting indeed um, a, well, just this landscape you know they're, they're out there they're hurting you know they're surrounded by these ruins and they they just they sort of bring wonder they make you wonder what's going on you know it, it's the they're coming forth the light shines on them and shines on the people there through the ruins and it's as if the ruins will lead them to something greater make them think about things and things of that nature pastoral landscape it's not just nature it's what happened there in the past that's important as well and it's what we do with the future that defines us. Red figure cup showing the death of Pentheus and Maned. Well, I like this Greek art. You know, this was almost the peasants art in Greece and it's so beautiful and it makes you wonder what was the high art uh, pottery. Uh, a lot of it hasn't existed, lasted, but it's just, it's, it's amazing uh, that the Greeks were surrounded by these, the ancient Greeks were surrounded by these things. Of course, in modern Greece, these things exist, too, in the museums, and um, you could get the little copies as to tourists. Uh, this is one of my favorites, possibly one of my favorite pieces in the collection. Maybe I've said that more than once. Portrait of the Emperor Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king. You know, they say there was a dream of Rome, and I think that's really cool, the philosopher king. And this is a nice bust of him. I, I think this is very nice. You know, it makes you wonder... His eyes are, I guess, looking to the side, and he has his curly hair and uh, beard. He's a philosopher king. Incidentally, uh, after uh, paganism kind of went out, uh, people used to knock, I believe this was in the Middle Ages, uh, statues' nose off because they thought the soul was somehow in there. It's interesting. You'll notice a lot of statues uh, from earlier periods don't have noses. And here's another example. I just thought that's a, that's a nice... Roman artifact, uh, priestess of the imperial cult. Man, doesn't that make you think of the Bacchus rituals? I think that's just absolutely amazing. Mummy mask. Oh, man. You know, we think about Egyptian mummy masks, but here's something else to think about. I, I like how the, the eyes are sort of preserved there as well. You might think this is Greek, actually, but if you zoom in, this is actually East Asian, uh, and I think that's uh, very interesting. Um... Bodhisattva torso. So uh, the Kimball is mixing up a lot of art because there's some exhibits, etc., etc. You should totally go visit the Kimball. <laughs> El Greco, one of my favorite uh, painters. This is he's painting Dr. Francisco de Pisa, Dominicos Theotokopoulos. I just think he was, you know, in some sense ahead of his time or just separate from his time. I mean, he's drawing in a way that evokes emotion and things I, th I think it's just absolutely amazing i love this painting you know you walk past it and you don't give it a second thought and then you go back and you say wow that's a very interesting painting it almost looks different with different lighting it's just look at this it's it's geometrical but it's not geometrical at the same time that's, that's what i think is amazing about this of course there's a nice wide array of colors and maybe there's something special that people like in flowers and that's that uh the utrecht 
uh, I think this is just geometric. I think they're trying to indicate to the painters believes God is you know this perfect, you know geometric, uh, you know almost Newtonian. Although I don't know if Newton existed when this painting was uh, painted, but Copernican or Ptolemaic system of the universe and everything is perfect. And kind of the only imperfect, I shouldn't say imperfect, but the things that aren't geometric are the humans there. But we. They, in the painter's view, get to be witness to the, to the glory of uh, this, I mean, what you might call sacred geometry. Very small painting, actually. I'd say it's a foot, uh, not even two feet, uh, very small. One foot by one foot. Uh, it's very, very small. Oh, this is great. This is what I was talking about, the landscape. But you have the ancients in the background, and that's where the light is coming from. Oh, my goodness. One of my favorites. You have here just this beautiful array of, you know, down there the water is coming up and light is almost coming out of there and it's going up to these ancient buildings, but they have to come down uh, and there's something decrepit and nature is coming in, but it's not necessarily a bad thing because there's people there and they're dressed nicely and they're going to make it great again. You know, the, you have to climb up the steps and water and the light will take you up to that uh, presumably beautiful building in the background. I think it's just an amazing, uh, if it's called Fantasia, no, the fountain, I think it's just very accurate. It's one of my favorite paintings in there. And then you have the goddess kind of as the guide of the water, given the edicts. I mean, and this guy is asking uh, the females something, presumably, and it's just, uh, I mean, it looks like, well, maybe there was an earthquake, you know, the, the plant seems to have fallen over here, but it, it's very interesting. These are just huge paintings filled with beauty and just sublime, you know, serenity. There's obviously some sort of turmoil, but I mean, there's, it's interesting. And I, uh, I loved looking at that. And here you have these Assyrian or, uh, you know, uh, Middle Eastern, very, very old, like thousands of years old. I mean, this reminds me of the cover of the Book of Gilgamesh that I read. It's just, it's really beautiful. Uh, group statue of Kana for and his family, an Egyptian, early Egyptian. We're talking like 2,465 through, two, through 2323 BC. We're, that is so long ago. That's 4,000 years ago. It's interesting to think the Egyptians all were to the Romans as the Romans are to us. That's how long ago it was. And portrait of Pharaoh Achaemenotop II. Oh, it's just great. And you got the nice Kimball architecture in the background. And here we have a nice little uh, yeah, part of Port Manichio of uh, the Kimball. I thought it was very nice to visit. Uh, young female attendant. You know, when I see these, maybe you can't really tell, but what she's holding her hand. I don't know. When I see that, sometimes I don't think it's a laptop or some sort of iPad or tablet device or you know, a cigar box or something. Uh, it's just, it's interesting. Of course, that's anachronistic, but... I don't know, it's kind of like J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, you know, having umbrellas in The Hobbit, you know, it's, it's kind of an anachronistic, but it's interesting to think about. Here's another uh, outside. I've never actually been to this outside, but this was taken from the inside, but I think it's a nice, just a little portrait of the outside and the Kimball architecture and design.